Hello, I'm Gajanan Devedi. And in Rouse, we are coming up with a new initiative called History Simplified Series. In this first session of History Simplified Series, I'm going to discuss national movement covering the period from 1885 to 1905 through the UPSC previous year questions. Why I'm starting with national movement is because probably this is one of the most important parts of UPSC history syllabus. And in the modern Indian history part, UPSC had asked nearly 60% of the questions in previous years from national movement. Another reason why I'm starting with national movement is that we are celebrating 75th year of independence and we are celebrating Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahatso. So for the coming two, three years, this national movement part would remain a super significant part for UPSC exam. I'll start with a very simple question of UPSC and gradually I would keep on increasing the difficulty level of the questions. Now starting with the first question. The question was asked by UPSC in 2008. Where was the first session of the Indian National Congress held in December 1885? Some basic information that we should have first that the first session of Congress was in 1885 in Bombay. In Bombay. The place was Gokuldas. The place was Gokuldas, Tejpal, Sanskrit, Sanskrit College. And this session, the first session was presided by W.C. Banerjee. So the first president of Congress was W.C. Banerjee. The second session of Congress was in 1886. And this was in Calcutta. This was in Calcutta. And this was presided by the grand old man of India, Dada Bhai Noroji. The third session of Congress was in 1887. This was in Madras. And this was presided by Badruddin Tayyabji. Tayyabji. The first Muslim president of Congress was Badruddin Tayyabji. A very important fact it is. Then the fourth session of Congress was in 1888. And this was at Allahabad. Eh? Allahabad. And this was presided by George Yule. The first European president of Congress was George Yule. The fifth session of Congress was in 1889. And this was again at Bombay. And this was presided by Vedarban. This was presided by Vedarban. A very important fact, Vedarvan was one of the co-founders of Indian National Congress along with A. O. Hume. So the main founder of Congress was A. O. Hume. Another important fact that Vedarvan is also the biographer of A. O. Hume. One more session, additional information. Sixth session was in 1890. This was again at Calcutta. And this was presided by the great moderate leader, Firoj, Firoj Shah Mehta, Firoj Shah Mehta. Look, whenever I'm solving a question, I'm giving you so much extra information so that with the help of the question, we can go through the entire part of the syllabus as well. Here, now the answer is very simple that it was in Bombay that the first session of Congress was convened. The place was Gokuldas, Gokuldas Tejpal Sanskrit College. The second question, 1998, this question was asked by UPSC. A very interesting question this is. First, you have to go for a matchmaking here. It says Theodore Beck and Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College at Aligarh. This is correct. You should know that Theodore Beck was one of the earliest principals of Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College that was basically established in Aligarh by the efforts of Syed Ahmad Khan. Syed Ahmad Khan, 
वॉज ऑलवेज नोन फॉर द अलीगढ़ आइडियोलॉजी अलीगढ़ आइडियोलॉजी आइडियोलॉजी अलीगढ़ आइडियोलॉजी वॉज अ रिफॉर्मिस्ट आइडियोलॉजी वॉज अ रिफॉर्मिस्ट आइडियोलॉजी एंड वॉट इट वॉन्टेड इट वॉन्टेड टू इंटरप्रेट इस्लामिक टीचिंग्स इन द लाइट ऑफ मॉडर्न आइडियाज इट ऑल्सो रिकमेंडेड मॉडर्न एजुकेशन एंड गवर्नमेंट जॉब फॉर द मुस्लिम्स इन द सेम डायरेक्शन बाय द अफर्ट्स ऑफ सर सैयद अहमद खान फर्स्ट वन स्कूल वॉज इस्टैब्लिश एट अलीगढ़ that is still later emerged as mohammedan anglo oriental college and is still later it emerged as the famous aligarh muslim university amu aligarh muslim university again a related information that you should have that aligarh ideology also had some problems because this aligarh ideology was completely pro british anti hindu an anti congress in its approach and that is why later the aligarh ideology left communal color so the positive feature of aligarh ideology was that it was a reformist ideology supported education the negative feature of aligarh ideology was that it left to communal color because it was pro british anti hindu and anti congress ideology first is a correct match second elbert bill controversy it was in times of ripon there is no doubt ripon the time period was 1880 to 84 the elbert bill controversy was in 1883 and 84 so it was in times of ripon the question is what was elbert bill controversy elbert bill in times of ripon tried to give the indian judges indian judges also the right to preside over the cases of the europeans to preside over the cases of the europeans so basically it wanted to give equality to the indian judges also to preside over the cases of the europeans and that is why it was strongly opposed by the british and the europeans and this created a massive controversy this is very significant because the british opposed it then the indian supported it and this controversy exposed the racial nature and imperial nature of the british rule to the indians it is said that it was the time of ripon that gave very organized shape to indian national movement look very soon after the time of ripon congress was established in 1885 then the third if second is correct the third firosha mehta Indian National Congress is again correct. Just now we discussed that Firoz Shah Mehta presided over the sixth session of Congress. Fourth, Badruddin Tayyabji and Muslim League is incorrect. We just now discussed that Badruddin Tayyabji was the first Muslim president of Congress. So fourth is absolutely correct, incorrect. And if fourth is absolutely incorrect, then we can solve the question by another method as well. Eliminate four out of A, eliminate four out of C, and eliminate four out of B. You will get your answer. We can solve the question from both the methods, direct and indirect. And certainly, when we can solve the question from multiple methods, the probability of getting negative marking in a question is negligible. So always try to solve the question through multiple methods. the next question is again on elbert bill controversy that was there asked by upsc in 2013 the elbert bill controversy just now we discussed it was in times of ripon ripon and what it wanted to give equality to the indian judges to the indian judges to preside over the cases of the europeans so here the answer would be c removal of disqualifications imposed on the indian magistrates with regard to the trial of the europeans that should be the answer that was elbert bill controversy elbert bill controversy is very important for us because when the british organized the huge campaign to oppose the bill we also organized a huge campaign to support the bill 
and Indian national movement started getting a very organized. Soon after this Ilward Bill controversy, we discussed that Indian National Congress was established in 1885. There is another question that was asked by UPSC in 2004. And here we have to go for the matchmaking and we have to figure out the incorrect pairs. Pitts India Act was brought in 1784. And the time of Warren Hastings or Hastings 1 was 1772 to 74. I am dividing the year because after the regulating act of 1773, he became governor general of Bengal. So, this is a correct match because Pitts India Act was brought in 1784. That was the time of Hastings 1. So, this would not be the answer because we have to figure out the incorrect pair. Then, doctrine of lapse. It is very simple. Dalhousie is always known for doctrine of lapse. What was doctrine of lapse? That if the ruler of a particular state passed away without a natural heir, then the state would not be inherited by the adopted son, had this adoption not already been approved by the company earlier. And rather the state would lapse to the paramount power. What was the paramount power? The British, they were the paramount power. And this was called doctrine of lapse. Based on the idea of doctrine of lapse, Dalhousie annexed multiple states like Satara, like Jaipur, like Sambalpur, like Bhagat, like Udaipur, Jhansi, and Nagpur. Additional information that Dalhousie annexed multiple states based on the idea of doctrine of labs. Then vernacular press act. This was brought in 70, this was brought in 1878, this vernacular press act, and the time of Kurjan was 1899 to 1905. Certainly, then this is incorrect pair. Vernacular press act was brought by Lytton. Lytton. And the time period of Lytton was 1876 to 80. So, in times of Lytton, the vernacular press act was brought. Lytton is always known for having anti-India approach. And he brought this vernacular press act to suppress criticism of the British government in Indian vernacular press. So, C is incorrect and this would be the answer. Then, Ilward Bill controversy, just now we discussed, it was there in times of Ripon. So, this is correct and this would not be the answer. Answer is simple, C would be the answer. Vernacular Press Act, it was brought in times of Lytton. Again, one thing that we can figure out here, remarkable, that price. We have already discussed about Ilward Bill when we are solving the previous year questions. And that is why I always tell you that, UPSC is not going to repeat the questions, but often it would repeat the important themes. The same question would not be repeated, but if a theme is important, UPSC is revolving so many times around it and framing questions in different formats around the same important thing. One important thing that we figure out here at this stage was the Ilbert Bill controversy in times of Ripon. The next question. Which one of the following Indian leaders was dismissed by the British from the Indian civil services? 1999, this question was asked by UPSC. First thing is a very interesting fact that you should know. All the four, Satyendranath Tagore, Surendranath Banerjee, R.C. Dutt and Subhash Chandra Bose, they all cleared ICS. No, all of them, they had cleared ICS. Then, some extra information. Subhash Chandra Bose left ICS to support Indian National Movement. So, he left and he was never dismissed. So, eliminate Subhash Chandra Bose. No? R. C. Dutt was also Indian civil servant and he is always known for writing a book that is called Economic History of India. Economic History of India. So, ICS, he also wrote the book, 
इकोनॉमिक हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया ही वॉज इकोनॉमिक हिस्टोरियन एलिमिनेट नाउ यू लेफ्ट विथ टू मोर चॉइसिस सत्येंद्र नाथ टैगोर एंड सुरेंद्र नाथ बैनर्जी द फर्स्ट इंडियन टू क्लियर आइसिस वॉज सत्येंद्र नाथ टैगोर ही वॉज द फर्स्ट इंडियन टू क्लियर आईसीएस सुरेंद्र नाथ बैनर्जी वॉज अ ग्रेट लीडर इन मॉडरेट टाइम्स he cleared ics but he was dismissed from the services by the british answer here would be surendra nath banerji some extra information about surendra nath banerji surendra nath banerji and anand mohan bose and anand mohan bose in 1876 in 1876 established indian association of calcutta or that was also called indian national association this is very significant because the most important organization before congress was indian association of calcutta or indian national association this was the most important organization before congress why this was the most important organization before congress because all the earlier organizations they took pro british approach but not this organization because surendra nath banerji was removed from ics so he never took pro british approach so the only organization before congress that was not taking pro british approach was indian association of calcutta again the importance of this organization established by surendra nath banerji was that even before congress it had been successful in convening to all india sessions of indian national conference in 1883 and 1885 so even before congress convened all india sessions to all india sessions were already convened by this indian national conference that was led by surendra nath banerji after this time this indian national conference merged with congress and surendra nath banerji once it merged with congress surendra nath banerji became one of the most prominent leaders of congress that time simple another question by upsc who among the following used the phrase un british to criticize the english colonial control of india 2008 upsc question this is it's simple dada bhai noroji wrote a book the name of that book was poverty poverty and un british rule un british rule in india what was importance of this book for the first time scientifically dada bhai noroji tried to expose the drain of wealth from india drain of wealth from india by the british some of the moderate leaders and the writers they were instrumental in their scientific writing in exposing the drain of wealth from india by the british dada bhai noroji was the most prominent one there were other leaders as well for example if you talk about other moderate leaders and some writers like mahadev govind ranade mahadev govind ranade gopal krishna gokhale then we talk about rc datta rc datta just now we discussed that he wrote economic history of india he was also economic historian and expose the drain of wealth from india then dinasa vacha dinasa vacha then g s ayer or g subramanya ayer another great leader who exposed the drain of wealth from india extra information that you should have that g s ayer was one of the founders of the hindu newspaper the hindu newspaper no huh? the hindu newspaper he was one of the initial founders of hindu newspaper in 1878 hindu newspaper was started puri zindagi tabah kar di nahi 
so much information is coming in hindu newspaper and now they have added a new section text and context and they are giving you beautiful explainers on every topic almost no like delimitation in jammu and kashmir no like privacy like issue like ukraine like crisis everything they are giving in explainer section hindu newspaper is becoming better and better and that is why the dns no the dns delhi news simplified that is also getting better and better no every day we don't have to miss even a single news one of the questions from 2008 upsc exam another question this is 2012 upsc question consider the following statements the most effective the keyword here is most not every contribution they are asking about the most effective contribution made by dada bhai noroji to the cause of indian national movement to the cause of indian national movement was that he first exposed the economic exploitation of india by the british true don't you think that he was one of the first who exposed the drain of wealth from india just now we discussed that then interpreted the ancient indian texts and restored the self confidence of the indians i have a serious doubt about this because dada bhai noroji was a parsi leader was a parsi leader and he also established one parsi reform organization that was called rehnumai rehnumai mazda yasnan mazda yasnan sabha that was a parsi reform association to spread the ideas which were modern ideas and also to spread the idea of zoro astrian religion the parsi they believe in zoro astrian religion but if this is so when he was a parsi leader why he would try to interpret ancient indian text or the vedic text when he was parsi why he would try to interpret the vedic or the ancient indian text second is gone third stress the need for eradication of all the social evils before anything else he was a social reformer but he was also a political leader first and more than the social reform noroji is always known for the political reform you cannot expect that he would say that before the social evils are eradicated nothing else should be taken up no more than that to eradicate all the social evil is near impossible you can reduce them but you cannot eradicate all of them the third statement is illogical no and when it is illogical eliminate three out of c eliminate three out of d eliminate three out of b a is the answer mujhe lagta hai mujhse kahin acche se swami sir is sawal ko padha sakte the no in aptitude and general mental ability more than history it is a question of general mental ability the third statement is illogical no so just eliminate and you will get your answer excellent teacher of csat swami sir is it not then one more question who of the following was or were economic critics of colonialism in india 2000 15 question this is dada bhai noroji exposed the drain of wealth from india no just now we discussed that g subramaniam ayer also exposed the drain of wealth from india and he was one of the earliest co-founders of hindu newspaper then r c datta himself was economic historian and he wrote the book economic history of india no so all the three no they were economic critique of colonialism in india answer would be d ab ek aur baat dekhiye r c datta dada bhai noroji 
when we are solving the previous year question papers, don't you think that how many times you will find that they are getting frequently asked by UPSC about Dada Bhai Noroji or about R.C. Dutta. That is the utility of solving the previous year questions. You always get the idea of very important themes which are for the UPSC exam. UPSC would not repeat the questions directly, but the themes would always be repeated by UPSC because there are limited number of important themes and the questions would revolve just around them. Another question by UPSC 1997. This question was asked by UPSC. This is a big question, no? Padne mein bhi thoda time lag jayega. But if I have to read, I would just read one single line. It is asking about a leader whom Mahatma Gandhi himself regarded as his master. Don't you think that Gopal Krishna Gokhale is considered the political guru of Gandhiji? Is this not a very simple question? No? Maybe you are in trouble when you see this part of information. But basically it's a very simple question. But UPSC would always give you some logical thing to solve the question. They are not asking you to mug up the facts. Always logical questions would be asked by UPSC. It was a chain. Gopal Krishna Gokhale always considered Mahadev Govind Rana Day as his own political guru. And Gandhi ji considered Gopal Krishna Gokhale as his own political guru. So, answer is simple. Gopal Krishna Gokhale, one of the greatest moderate leaders in India was Gopal Krishna Gokhale. In 1905, he also established a society that was called Servants. Servants of India Society. Of India Society. Thank you. In 1905, he also established a society that was called Servants of India Society. And this was dedicated to inculcate the sense of nation nationalism among the young people. Correct? Now, if you talk about Gopal Krishna Gokhale, he was the editor of the famous newspaper Sudhara. Another important information that you should have, Gopal Krishna Gokhale also presided over Congress session in Banaras, in Banaras, in 1905. This was the time a lot of political churning was going on in India over the issue of Swadeshi and boycott, over the issue of Swadeshi and boycott. And in this Banaras session of Indian National Congress, a mild resolution was brought for the first time supporting the idea of Swadeshi and boycott, and boycott, that time. That was the Banara session that was presided by Gopal Krishna Gokhale. Question by UPSC 1997 exam. Simple? Koi This question is 1998 UPSC question. This is a statement and you have to figure out the person who gave this statement. No? The Congress is tottering to its fall and one of my great ambitions while in India is to assist it to a peaceful demise. This statement is attributed to, this is a famous statement that was given by Lord Curzon. Lord Curzon was very insulting towards Indian National Congress and he always wanted to suppress Indian nationalism. What was the time period of Lord Curzon? 1899 to 1905. That was the time period of Lord Curzon. Very imperialist in his approach. And he always wanted to suppress Indian national movement. So he took all the efforts trying to suppress Indian nationalism. For example, in 1899, Calcutta. Calcutta Corporation Act was brought. And the act was designed to reduce the number of elected members in local bodies. 
then in 1904 indian indian universities indian universities act was brought by karzan and this was designed to create very strict rules of affiliation for the universities as the universities were becoming the hub of rising nationalism in india in 1904 itself he brought official secrets act official secrets secrets act and this official secrets act was designed to suppress the criticism of government in indian press then in 1905 he went for the plan of partition of bengal no he went for implementing the plan of partition of bengal and when there was plan of partition of bengal certainly it led us towards the swadeshi like movement but certainly it created a massive resentment in india against the british and he was very insulting towards the indian national congress from the start itself he made it very clear that he was not going to negotiate with the nationalist leaders rather he believed that congress was tottering to its fall and he would just help this in its peaceful demise from the start itself he made it very clear that he was not here to negotiate with the leaders of indian national congress so this famous statement was given by karjan the answer here would be b what was the immediate cause for the launch of swadeshi movement 2010 this question was asked by upsc very simple question no why swadeshi movement was there because partition of bengal just now we have seen lord karzan came up with the plan of partition of bengal and that led to huge resentment among the indians but why the indians were so angry that is also a question what was the plan the plan was to divide bengal into two parts west bengal bihar and odisha with the capital as calcutta with the capital as calcutta then east bengal and assam as the second part with the capital as dhaka with the capital as dhaka that was the plan that was given by british to partition bengal now when the plan was given when the plan was given the british said that this division was needed and this division was needed because bengal was too big and too populous to deal with it was the biggest province population wise one fourth of the population of british india was in bengal so on that parameter the plan was justified but the way they divided bengal that was very problematic east and west west would become hindu majority area and west would become hindu majority area and east bangladesh fall apart it would become muslim majority area first of all this partition of bengal plan was one of the policies of divide and rule by the british toward the indians second the bengali speaking people that time they were at the apex of national movement this was also a plan to divide the bengali speaking people you will find that in western part in western part it was expected that the hindi speaking people of bihar and odisha they would be more in number compared to bengali speaking people and in eastern part in bangladesh area it was expected that the urdu speaking people they would dominate the bengali speaking people in eastern part so there were two problems with bengal partition first it divided the bengalis on linguistic basis second it also divided the region on the basis of religion and this would aggravate the communal politics and that is why when the plan was given by karjan then the leaders were very angry and that became the basic reason for the start of swadeshi movement in 2010 upsc asked this question simple question see another question the next question 
UPSC exam. Ask the question. In the context of Indian freedom struggle, 16th of October 1905 is well known for Swadeshi movement. What was the course of Swadeshi movement? Some basic and important things that we should know that 7th of August, 7th of August 1905, the Calcutta, Calcutta town hall resolution was brought. Resolution was brought. And this was the formal start of Swadeshi movement. No? How the Swadeshi movement started? The leaders, they brought Calcutta Town Hall Resolution on 7th of August in 1905 that formally started the Swadeshi movement. Then the British did not back down. And on 16th of October 1905, what happened? That partition of Bengal was actually implemented. The British still did not back down. On 16th of October in 1905, the partition of Bengal was implemented by the British. That further intensified Swadeshi movement. Again, some extra information that when you talk about the course of Swadeshi movement, it can be divided into three phases. First, informal phase. Informal phase. Informal phase was from 1903 to 1905. The plan to partition of Bengal had already been given by British in 1903. In 1905, it was implemented. So already there was a resentment in India. And there was informal phase of Swadeshi movement from 1903 to 1905. And that was led by the moderate leaders, the moderates. 1905, 16th of October, the plan was implemented and the moderate leaders failed to save Bengal from partition. No? That started the formal phase. Formal phase of Swadeshi movement, the time period was 1905 to 1908. And this was led by the extremist leaders like Bipin Chandrapal, Aurobindo Ghosh, Bal Gangada Tilak and many extremist leaders. After 1908 onward, the movement declined. Why the movement declined? Because on the issue of Swadeshi and boycott, there was a controversy between the extremists and the moderates. And in 1907, that had led to the Surat split. Surat split between the extremists and the moderates. After this Surat split, the entire national movement stagnated. And when the entire national movement stagnated, the overall Swadeshi movement was part of this overall national movement. It also started stagnating. Simple. Then, the next question by UPSC. Another question. 2014, this question was there. The partition of Bengal made by Lord Curzon in 1905 lasted until. The question is asking that when partition of Bengal, the decision was reversed. Then you should know something that in 1911, the partition of Bengal was reversed. Was reversed. And why this was reversed? Because there was rise of revolutionary activities. There was huge rise of revolutionary activities. And just to avoid a revolutionary condition, the British were compelled to reverse the partition of Bengal in 1911. How? This was there. East Bengal and West Bengal, now they were merged together. Back. And Bihar and Odisha, they were separated. Bihar and Odisha, they were separated. So partition of Bengal lasted till 1911. How this was done? Why? How this was reversed? A royal darbar was convened in Delhi. A royal darbar was convened in Delhi in 1911. And that was actually in the honor of King George V, the British crown. And in this royal darbar, the Kurjans Act, that was for partition of Bengal, this was nullified. So it was in 1911 that the royal darbar in Delhi, it nullified the Kurjan sack and reversed the partition of Bengal. Now, the British had already proposed 
that the Muslims would get a province that is Eastern Bengal that would be Muslim majority area because they were following their policy of divide and rule and here they were reversing the partition of Bengal so they played another trick to continue with this policy of divide and rule in 1911 when they reversed the partition of Bengal they also shifted the capital from Calcutta to Delhi to Delhi in 1911-12 Delhi became the capital of British India it became the capital before this Calcutta was the capital of British India now 1911-12 they shifted the capital they said that this was the center for the Muslim rule now they were shifting the capital to Delhi basically they were just following their policy of divide and rule the British always wanted to keep divided the Hindus and the Muslims to keep the national movement weak. Another related information that you should have. In 1912, when the capital was being shifted to Delhi, that was the time the Governor General and Viceroy was Harding. Harding II. Harding II. And Harding II was trying to get entry to Delhi. And when this was there, two revolutionaries, they threw the bomb on Governor General and Viceroy Harding. They were the great revolutionaries, Ras Bihari Bose and Sachin Sanyal. And Sachin Sanyal. In 1912, this was called Delhi Conspiracy Case. Delhi Conspiracy Case. Delhi conspiracy case of 1912 when the bomb was thrown on Harding this was the time the new capital was there and he was trying to get entry into the new capital that was the time bomb was thrown by Ras Bihari Bose and Sachin Sanyal again be careful Ras Bihari Bose was not Ras Bihari Ghosh Ras Bihari Ghosh was a very moderate leader who presided over the Surat session of Congress in which there was a split between the extremists and the moderates. We are not talking about Ras Bihari Ghosh. We are talking about Ras Bihari Bose, who was a revolutionary leader. Another question. A very simple question, no? 2016 UPSC asked the question. So, this and boycott were adopted as the methods of a struggle for the first time. During the agitation against the partition of Bengal, no? when the partition of Bengal was implemented, already there was intensifying national movement and just before that the Calcutta Town Hall Resolution had formally started the Swadeshi movement. Swadeshi movement was led by the extremist leaders and the extremist leaders style of politics can be defined in the form of a triangle. The three pillars of extremist leadership. How this was? So they see. Boycott and national education. No, the three pillars of extremist ideology. So they see. What was so they see? Use of Indian products, ideas, tradition, and culture. Everything that was Indian. That would be so they see. Then what was boycott? Boycott of everything that was foreign. Goods, products, services, schools, colleges and everything that was British and foreign. And third, national education. What was national education? One education that was modern education but yet that was directed towards nation building. The British brought modern education but that was directed and designed to support the imperial purpose. The Indian leader said, boycott the British education system as well and go for national education. One education system that would support nation building. So the three pillars of extremist political style, so they see boycott and national education. The start of Swadeshi movement itself concretized the rise of the extremist leadership in Congress in 1905. And during the Swadeshi movement, or the agitation against partition of Bengal, 
when the extremist leadership became very prominent, the idea of Swadeshi and boycott was used during the Swadeshi movement to oppose the partition of Bengal. Simple. Another question that was asked by UPSC in 2019. With reference to Swadeshi movement, consider the following statements. First, it contributed to the revival of the indigenous artisan crafts and industries. We discussed Swadeshi movement led by the extremist leaders. It used three basic ideas. Swadeshi. No? Swadeshi. Then boycott. Then boycott. And then national education. What was Swadeshi? Use of anything, everything that was Indian. So don't you think that naturally it would lead to revival of indigenous artisan crafts and industries? First is correct. Second, the National Council of Education was established as a part of Swadeshi movement. This is also true. In 1906, you will find the National Council of Education was established and a byproduct of this National Council of Education was Bengal National College. Bengal National College that was also established in 1906 and famous leader Aurobindo Ghosh, the famous leader Aurobindo Ghosh was the principal of this Bengal National College. All this was there because the third pillar of extremist ideology was national education. Modern education that would yet be directed towards nation building. Another question, which one of the following defines extremist ideology during the early phase of Indian freedom movement? During the early phase of Indian freedom movement, 1998 question, this is, this is a very tricky question. First, stimulating the production of indigenous articles by giving them preference over imported articles. True it is, that is what is the idea of Swadeshi and boycott. No? Then, obtaining self-government by aggressive means in place of petitions and constitutional way. True it is. The extremist leaders, they demanded self-government or Swaraj. No? And third, providing national education according to the requirement of the country. True it is. The extremist leaders, they demanded national education. So, C is also correct. Fourth, is incorrect. Why? When you say organizing coup against the British Empire through military revolt, that was not the way of the extremist leaders. This was something that can be associated with the revolutionary leaders like Bhagat Singh, Chandra Shekhar Azad, no, but not with the extremist leaders like Tilak. But other three options, they are very close to each other. Now we are in trouble. Look, your PC says in the instructions, that if you find more than correct options, more than one correct options, then find out the option that is the best option. Now again try to understand, we discussed that extremist ideology would be defined by Swadeshi, boycott and national education. But why they wanted this type of politics? Why? Because basically they would like to get Swaraj for India or self-rule for India? What was the basic demand? Swaraj. Why Swadeshi and boycott or national education they were needed so that Indians would be able to rule over themselves, self-rule. So don't you think that everything was designed to achieve Swaraj? So what is the major goal? Self-rule. Now this is the most important no? ideology of the extremist. So now this would supersede an answer would be B. Simple, UPSC says that when you find more than one correct option, figure out the best option. B would be the answer of this question. Another question was asked by UPSC in 1999. That the Congress policy of pray and petition ultimately came to an end under the guidance of. First, we have to understand that how we make the difference between the moderate and the extremist politics. 
the moderate politics was the politics of constitutional agitation of prayers and petitions. This was called constitutional way of agitation because this would be allowed by the British. On the other hand, the extremist way of politics was extra constitutional way of politics based on the idea of boycott in Swadeshi. Swadeshi and boycott. This was extra constitutional way of agitation and this was the style of the extremists. With the rise of extremist leadership, the moderate politics started declining. And there was rise of some very prominent moderate leaders. Like the most prominent leader was Bal Gangadhar Tilak. And he was from Maharashtra region. Or Ravinda Ghosh. And Bipin Chandra Pal. Bipin Chandra Pal. They were very prominent leaders from Bengal. Additional information that you should have that Aurobindo Ghosh wrote a series of articles called the New Lamps. New Lamps for Old. For Old. To criticize the moderate politics of pray and petition. Then Lala Lajpat Rai and Ajit Singh and Ajit Singh, they were very prominent leader, extremist leaders from Punjab. And Ajit Singh, one additional information that you should have, was also uncle of Bhagat Singh. Then Sayyid Haider Raza was very prominent extremist leader from Delhi. Then T. Prakasham, T. Prakasham was a very prominent extremist leader from Andhra, from Andhra and Chidambaram Pillai, Chidambaram Pillai was very prominent extremist leader from Madras, from Madras. Chidambaram Pillai was very prominent extremist leader from Madras. There were so many prominent extremist leaders that time and the rise of prominent leaders Extremist, it was completely curtailing the moderate influence. Among these extremist leaders, the most important was the triangle of Lal, Bal and Pal, Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Bipin Chandra Pal. And even among this triangle, the most prominent leader was Bal Gangadhar Tilak. So we can say that it was under the leadership of Bal Gangadhar Tilak that the Congress policy of pre and petition came to an end. A related information that we can use to solve another question of UPSC. The question was asked in 2008 that who gave a systematic critique of moderate politics of Indian National Congress in a series of articles entitled The New Lands for Old. We know that just now we discussed that it was Aurobindo Ghosh who wrote this series of articles to criticize the moderate politics of prey and petitions. So answer here would be A. One more question from your PC 2018 exam. He wrote biographies of Majani, Garibaldi, Shivaji and Sri Krishna stayed in America for some time and was also elected to Central Assembly. He was, the answer here would be Lala Lajpat Rai. Lala Lajpat Rai, a great extremist leader, an excellent writer he was. He wrote many biographies like that of Majni, Garibaldi and others to actually inspire the people to go for the sacrifice toward the nation. Majni and Garibaldi, they were instrumental behind Italian unification, no? Italian unification. He wrote many biographies to inspire the people to go for the sacrifice toward the nation. Then, when you talk about Lala Lajpat Rai, some basic information, he was called Punjab Kesri. Punjab Kesri, the most prominent leader, extremist leader from Punjab area was Lala Lajpat Rai. He also started a newspaper or a journal that itself was called Punjabi. It was a revolutionary journal that was started by him. It was called Punjabi. Lala Lajpat Rai was also one Arya Samajist and in Arya Samaj, he led the college section, college section 
of Arya Samaj. What was college section of Arya Samaj? College section of Arya Samaj demanded that there should be modern education and yet rooted through the Indian tradition. The Indian tradition. This section that was called college section established many DAVs, Dhyanan Anglo Vedic schools. And the most prominent DAV that was established that time was at Lahore. Was at Lahore. Lala Lajpatrai died when he got fatal injuries, when he was protesting against Simon Commission. Simon Commission protest, he received fatal injuries that time and then he passed away. And again there is a related information that Bhagat Singh Bhagat Singh killed Sounders, Sounders, who was responsible for the Lati charge in the Simon Commission protest that was going on. He was responsible for the Lati charge over Lala Lajpat Rai, Sounders. He was killed by Bhagat Singh and death of Lala Lajpat Rai was avenged by Bhagat Singh. 2018 UPSC question. Clear? question. Who among the following did not believe in the drain theory of Dada Bhai Nauroji? 1996. It's a very interesting question. No? R.C. Dutt and Mahadev Govinda Ranade. Just now we discussed where those who themselves exposed the drain of wealth from India. Certainly, they would support the drain of wealth theory given by Dada Bhai Nauroji. So we can eliminate them. But then still we are left with two very close options, Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Sir Sayyad Ahmad Khan. Bal Gangadhar Tilak was extremist leader and the extremists they always opposed the policies of the moderate leaders. So one may feel confused that whether the answer is Bal Gangadhar Tilak, but that would not be correct. One thing is remarkable, the greatest contribution of the greatest contribution of the moderate leaders like Dada Bhai Nauroji that they exposed the drain of wealth from India and hence they gave the basis of economic nationalism, economic nationalism in India. The greatest contribution of the moderate leaders that they gave the basis to economic nationalism and that became the backbone of national movement for all the times to come. Even the extremist leaders would use the idea like Swadeshi. No? Swadeshi. Don't you think that Swadeshi was also something that would support the idea of economic nationalism? The idea of Swadeshi and boycott used by the extremist leaders that itself was based on the idea of economic nationalism. So they opposed the moderate politics, but they never opposed the drain of wealth theory that was given by the moderate leaders like Dada Bhai Nauroji. So we can also eliminate Bal Gangadhar Tilak. And here the answer would be Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan. No? Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan belonged to a ligar ideology that was always pro-British. We discussed it was always anti-Congress and it was always anti-Hindu. Anti-Hindu. So he never supported any idea that was given by Congress and he opposed the drain of wealth theory that was given by the prominent leaders of Congress like Dada Bhai Nauroji. Answer here would be D. Simple. Another question. 1998. UPSC asked the question. The Indian Muslims in general were not attracted to the extremist movement. Because. Let's take one example of the extremist movement. Swadesi movement. Extremist movement. Swadesi. Swadesi. Movement was one extremist led movement. Now, you will find that when you talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the extremist type of politics like Swadeshi movement, you will find that they added new sections of society into national movement. For example, women. 
and students. That was positive. Two new sections were added into national movement. The women and the students, and that was needed. Without having women in national movement, it would never be a truly democratic movement because they were 50% of the society. And the students, they were the future leaders. So their addition was needed. And the greatest contribution of the extremist type of politics, like Swadeshi movement, that they added new sections into national movement. But there was a trouble. They could not attract two major sections to national movement. One, when you talk about the negative side, they could not attract the peasantry. Peasantry to national movement. The ideas, higher ideas given by the educated extremist leaders could not attract the farmers. So their ideology was not very popular in the rural areas. First problem. Second problem, the extremist leaders were using the Hindu religious elements to increase the political awareness of the people. But if this is so, don't you think that a major section of Muslim population would get alienated from their type of politics that time? No? So, the extremist leaders, they failed to integrate peasantry into national movement. Second negative was that the Muslims, they were not much attracted. The Muslims were not much attracted towards their type of ideology and politics. We can give you an example. If you talk about Tilak, Tilak talked about organizing Shivaji and Ganesh festivals. And if you talk about Aurobindo Ghosh, he talked about the worship of Bharat Mata. He talked about the worship of Bharat Mata like a goddess. Certainly, this type of ideology could not attract the Muslims in general towards it. So, if you say that the Indian Muslims in general were not attracted towards the extremist movement because the extremist's policy of harping on Hindu aspect, certainly it would fail to attract major section of Muslim towards the movement. Answer here would be D. 1998, your basic question this is. Some more questions? I hope you are not tired. With reference to the Indian freedom struggle, which one of the following statements is not correct? UPSC 2002. Question this is. Simple thing, we have to figure out incorrect statement. See the third statement, the All India Muslim League, which was formed in 1906, vehemently opposed the partition of Bengal and separate electorate. Don't you think that from the start itself, Muslim League was demanding separate electorate for the Muslims? And the only party that time, major party that time that supported partition of Bengal was Muslim League. This is absolutely correct. And we have to figure out incorrect statement. So C would be the answer. In October, in October 1906, Aga Khan, Aga Khan had already led, Aga Khan had already led a delegation to the Governor General and Viceroy at that time, Minto II, and had demanded separate electorate for the Muslims in October 1906. What was separate electorate? The British said that in separate electorate, the candidates would come from a particular reserve category. And the voters would also come from that particular reserved category. For example, for the separate electorate for the Muslims, only the Muslims they would get elected and only the Muslims they would vote. That was a very communal idea. No? The British were constantly going for divide and rule policy. And that is why they were constantly aggravating the communal politics in India. Aga Khan had already demanded separate electorate from the British in October 1906 when he led a Muslim delegation to 
the governor general and viceroy Minto II. With the support of the British, Aga Khan Salimullah, Salimullah Wakarul Mulk, Wakarul Mulk, and Moisin ul Mulk, Moisin ul Mulk established Muslim League in December 1906. So Muslim League was established by four prominent leaders, Aga Khan, Salimullah, Wakar al-Mulk and Mohsin al-Mulk. And from the start itself, Muslim League followed a completely pro-British policy, anti-Hindu policy and anti-Congress policy. We have to be very careful that this was a very similar alleged like policy or ideology that was followed by Muslim League. The British encouraged this type of politics because they were going for their politics of divide and rule. So, all India Muslim League followed pro-British policy. It would not oppose partition of Bengal. And the Muslim League leaders themselves demanded separate electorate so they would not oppose separate electorate. See, it's absolutely wrong. We have to figure out incorrect statement. See is the answer. Correct? Which of the following groups participated during the Swadeshi movement? I have taken a question from Rao's Prelims Test Series. In Rao's, there's a big test team. And you will find that they will very closely first monitor the pattern of UPSC. And then they would form a question accordingly based on the same pattern. And not only this, the team would try not to just frame a question on a similar pattern, but would also try to give you some extra information when you are trying to solve those questions. That is why I have taken one or two examples from Rao's test three just to give you the idea how they are framing the question. Just now, by solving the questions, we figured out that the negative point of the extremist movement or the Swadeshi-like movement or the Swadeshi-like movement was that movement was that they failed to attract the extremists, they failed to attract the farmers and the Muslims and the Muslims. Their ideology was not very prominent in rural area and their ideology could not attract the Muslims and they were using the Hindu religious elements. So, if the question that they framed, the editorial team, the test team that has framed it, that which of the following group participated during the Swadeshi movement, certainly Muslim pageantry should not be part of the Swadeshi movement. No? That is absolutely illogical. So, if you eliminate three, out of A, 3 out of D and 3 out of C, anyway you will get the answer, no? And in addition you will come to know what are the other groups, those who participated in Swadeshi movement. Again this is question from UPC 2007 and this is asking about the song Amar Sonar Bangla and it says that it inspired the Swadeshi movement as well as the liberation struggle of Bangladesh and adopted as the national anthem of Bangladesh, Amar Sonar Bangla. The idea of Swadeshi movement was excellent because Swadeshi movement was just not a political movement. Swadeshi was use of Indian products, ideas, tradition and everything that was Indian. So it got reflected in every aspect of life, economy, politics, art, literature and everything. During Swadeshi movement, some of the books became very prominent, some of the writing became very prominent. Amar Sonar Bangla, this was written by Ravindranath Tagore and later it became the national anthem in Bangladesh. Another prominent writing, a similar type of song, nationalist song was written in South. This was called Sudesh Geetam, Sudesh Geetam and this was written by Subramanyam Bharti, Subramanyam Bharti. During the Swadeshi movement, 
another collection of stories was written that was called Thakur Mar Juli. Thakur Mar Juli. Thakur Mar Juli was a collection of fairy tales. And this was written by Dakshina. Dakshina Ranjan. Ranjan Mitra. Dakshina Ranjan Mitra wrote this Thakur Mar Juli. Inspired by the Swadeshi idea, it was a collection of fairy tales. Another book that was very prominent book this time was the book that was Desher Katha that was written by Sakharam Ganesh. And one question was asked by UPSC on this Desher Katha. Just see this. In 2020, UPSC asked the question Desher Katha. Figure out the name of the book, very important Desher Katha. And this was written by Sakharam Ganesh. Some basic things that you should know, then you would be in a position to solve this question. Sakha Ram Ganesh himself was a Marathi. Was a Marathi. The book that he wrote, The Ser Katha, The Ser Katha, it became very prominent during the Swadeshi time and inspired many plays and the acts that time. The idea of The Ser Katha was very prominent. And it was used by many leaders that time. Then, the Ser Katha basically talked about the change in the British policies, in the British policies, industrial, industrial, educational, cultural, and other policies that the British were changing to change the behavior of the Indians, to increase the demand of the British industrial product, and that was leading to the destruction of traditional industries across India. The British changed the industrial, economic, educational and cultural policy towards India gradually to create a big market for them. No? And when this was there, that led to destruction of traditional industries across India. So that led to complete destruction of traditional industries across India. All India, there was destruction of traditional industries. That was the idea that was given by the book Desher Katha. Now try to solve this question. First the statement says that it warned against the colonial state's hypnotic conquest of the mind. Interpretation based question this is. Suppose if the British would change the educational and cultural policy, would it not change the behavior of the Indians? And would we not like to behave like British? And would it not increase the demand of the British product? And would it not be the hypnotic conquest of mind by the British? No, that is what was the statement. Interpretation based, the change in educational and the cultural policy was a hypnotic conquest of the mind by the British. First is correct. Second, it inspired the performance of Swadeshi street plays and the folk songs too. So this movement was much inspired by the idea of the Sher Katha. Third, the use of Desh by the Yuskar was in the specific context of the region of Bengal. It is wrong. First, he talked about the destruction of the traditional industries across India. Second, he himself was Marathi. Third, statement is incorrect. The answer would be one and two. A very difficult question, but when you can interpret you can solve this question very easily. Another question. The painting of Abhinindra Nath Tagore are classified as UPSC 1999 question. Look, the idea of Swadeshi we discussed got reflected in every aspect of life. In literature, in art, in education, in industry, in science, in every way. In art, there was rise of Bengal school of painting. Bengal school of painting. Of painting. This Bengal school of painting was basically a revivalist school of painting. There were two very prominent painters of this Bengal school of painting. One was Abhinindranath Tagore and one was Nandalal Bose. Nandalal Bose. Bengal school of painters, 
like Nand Lal Bose and Abhinidranath Tagore. They wanted to revive Swadeshi idea in painting. It was the time European influence was dominating Indian art and painting. They said that we would get inspired by Indian tradition like Ajanta, like Elora, and that is why they tried to revive the Indian style of painting. That is why the paintings of Abhinidranath Tagore and Bengali school of painting basically were revivalist in nature. It was inspired by Swadeshi idea. Extra information. In 1907, in 1907, Indian Society, Indian Society of Oriental Arts, of Oriental, Oriental Arts was also established and this was there to support the Indian style of painting. The Indian Society of Oriental Arts, the first recipient of this society was Nandalal Bose. Nandalal Bose was the first recipient of the fellowship that was started by Indian Society of Oriental Arts that was established in 1907 and this was all a byproduct of Swadeshi movement. Clear? Another question, which of the following movements had contributed to a split in Indian National Congress resulting in the emergence of moderates and the extremists. 2015 UPC question, this was for the AC movement. How? Look. Swadeshi and boycott. In Swadeshi movement, two prominent ideas. There was gradually a big controversy between the extremists and the moderates. How big Swadeshi should be? No? And how big the boycott should be? The extremists said that, the extremists said that, if you want to go for Swadeshi, go for all India, a movement. No? And they said that if you want to go for boycott as well, then boycott the legislatures as well. The moderates were not happy with this idea. They were never a supporter of mass movement. No? More than that, throughout their life, they had worked for getting entry into legislature, so they were not very happy about the idea of boycotting the legislature. The extremists wanted to give a more radical version of Swadeshi movement to expand it across India and to also boycott the legislature. That led to gradually aggravating a controversy between both the sides and eventually there was Surat session. Surat session of Congress in 1907 that was presided by Ras Bihari Ghos a very moderate leader, not Ras Bihari Bose, who was a revolutionary. Ras Bihari Ghosh, a very moderate leader. And there, the extremists and the moderates, they got separated. This was called the famous Surat split. From Surat split to the start of mass movement, by the end of the First World War. This is the portion that we will cover in the next session of History Simplified Series. No? So next session would be equally very important and very interesting from Surat session till the time of the start of the mass movement we are going to cover in the next session. Thank you.